Now we reach to the most important part, which is creating a physical standby database stages. As with any project, you have two phases, planning and then execution. Planning is highly important in production because you have to define a lot of things before going ahead with implementing data guard. When you're planning your data guard, you have to define uh, two things first, which are RPO and RTO, recovery point objective and recovery time objective. Recovery point objective is uh, how much data you are willing to lose when the failure takes place. This is very important because if your application doesn't allow data loss, like it is a mission critical application, in this case, you have to use the synchronous redo transport maximum protection or maximum availability mode. But using those modes, you need highly reliable network and usually you have to define two databases because uh, you don't need your system to go down if the standby database goes down. And of course, this will affect the cost of the project. RTO defines how long it takes for the database to be up and running after a failure. From my experience, a standby database takes a few seconds to fail over if the primary database goes down. However, you need to test that before you go ahead with your configuration. So based on the RPO and RTO, you take decisions on the following, which protection mode to use, how much should the bandwidth be and the latency of the network. Also, you need to define the hardware specification of the standby system, which ideally should be the same as the primary database and you should consider enabling the fast start failover. We will discuss about fast start failover in a separate lecture. This feature simply allows the failover to uh, happen automatically if the primary database goes down. When you decide to go on with building your data guard configuration, you go through the following. First, you decide which management interface you're going to use. Just to remind you, we have three options, SQL Plus, Data Guard Broker, and Enterprise Manager Cloud Control. Also, you need to decide to use either the SysDG or the SysDBA. SysDG is a role which was introduced in Oracle 12C, and it has the privileges required for a Data Guard Administrator to manage the data guard environment. Then you, you will prepare the database for creating the standby database. We will uh, uh, talk in details about that in the incoming slide. And then you prepare the standby database also. We will talk about this soon. And finally, you create the physical standby database. You will notice that the creating the physical standby database is actually the easiest part. Getting the databases uh, ready for creating the physical standby is the most time consuming part of this procedure. So what do you need to do in the primary database to make it ready for uh, creating a standby database? You need to enable the archiving mode. You need to configure the archive log deletion policy in RMAN. This is not a must, this is optional. But practically, you need to define it because you wouldn't let the archived redo log files to accumulate and uh, grow forever. They must be deleted eventually. So you need to configure this policy in RMAN for this in RMAN for this purpose. You need also to enable the forced logging to prevent the database from executing any logging operation. Also, you need to configure the SRL in the standby that in the standby database. Although this is optional in the maximum uh, performance mode, but it is highly recommended to uh, enable them. Then you need to set the related uh, primary database initialization parameters. We will talk about those parameters in a minute. And then enable the flashback database. This is highly recommended. You need also to set the control file record keep time parameter because this parameter controls how much uh, records should be kept in the control file. You need to uh, increase it from the default if you are using the default value. Configure also the tnsnames.ora file to make the primary database and the uh, standby database see each other. And finally, you need to create a password file in the primary database if there isn't one. Those are the related primary database initialization parameters that you need to take care of when you configure your data guard.
DB unique name to define the uh, unique name of your uh, database. Log archive config, which uh, we have talked about it uh, earlier, and log archive destination to define uh, the attributes of your data guard configuration. Also, remote log password should be exclusive. FAL server should be uh, set to the standby database. We will talk about this parameter in another, in another lecture. Standby file management should be set to auto. And the DB file name convert parameter. This is an optional parameter that you would use if the directory structure of the, dat of the standby database is different from the directory structure of the primary database. So in the standby system, what do you need to do? You need to create any directories required by the database, like the directories used for the data files or the trace files. You also need to create a initsid.ora file, which will have only a single uh, parameter in it. This file will be used by the standby only the first time you start up the instance. Rman will create an SP file for you when you create the data guard. You will see this in details when we go to the practice uh, in the next lecture. Copy the password file from the primary system. Configure the tnsnames.ora file. Create a static listener entry in the standby database. We need to discuss further a little bit about this point because Oracle documentation is saying uh, the dynamic registration works fine with the data guard. But actually, I have seen some issues when you use the dynamic uh, registration in the listener and you better create a static listener entry in the in the listener of your uh, primary and standby databases to avoid those issues uh, for example if we will learn in a later slide that uh, we're gonna use uh, our man duplicate uh, command to create the standby database that command would fail if you are using uh, dynamic uh, registration Finally, it is recommended to configure uh, NTP to make sure that the time between the uh, primary database and the standby database will not change in the future. After you prepare the primary database and the standby system, you go ahead with creating a standby uh, database. This is the manual procedure of creating a standby database. There's another better procedure, but uh, just for uh, your reference, I'm gonna talk about this procedure. Uh, first, you use Rman to take backup of the primary database files. Also, you create control files and P file for the standby database. Then you take copy of the primary database encryption wallet, if there is one. Then you copy the files from the primary server to the standby server. And then you set the standby database parameter log archive destination in the primary database. After that, you start the physical standby database and create online redo log files in the standby database. As you can see, this uh, procedure has a lot of uh, manual steps. There is a better alternative uh, procedure, which is creating standby from active database. With this single command, in Rman, you use duplicate target database for standby from active database. This is very, uh, very good uh, method of creating a standby database because Rman will take care of creating the data files, of creating the SP file, control files, everything. All the manual, okay, not all, but most of the manual steps that uh, have been mentioned in the previous slide will be automatically done by Rman with this single command. We're going to use this method in, uh, in the practice in the next lecture to create our standby database. After you create the database, you need to start the redo apply. You use this command to start the redo apply, alter database, recover, managed standby database, disconnect. Once the redo apply is up and running, your configuration is done. After that, you may do the post creation steps. If you want, you can upgrade the protection mo mode because the previous procedure uh, created a data guard with maximum performance mode. You can upgrade it to uh, maximum availability or maximum protection. It depends on your objective. Also, you need to enable a flashback database. This is uh, an interesting point because the standby database uh, will not have the flashback database enabled by default. 
even if the primary database was uh, having the flashback database enabled that's why uh, you you may uh, enable it after creating the uh, standby database and as we have uh, discussed before it is highly recommended to enable it in the name document 1581388.1 this oracle document has a script to check the health of your uh, data guard environment so by the end of this lecture you should you should have learned how to define the oracle data guard requirements describe the important attributes in log archive destination parameter that controls the data guard operation we have talked about the sync and unsync we have talked about uh, valid for attributes and uh, affirm and no affirm attributes all the important attributes in this parameter and finally we talked about how to prepare and uh, the primary database and the standby system to create a physical standby database and we learned about the procedure to create the standby database in the next lecture we're gonna uh, go into the, uh, the practice to implement all what we have discussed in this lecture we're gonna create a physical standby database and that uh, that will be the maybe the most important practice because that database will be used in all the lectures that will come after that lecture so thank you for listening and see you in the next practice lecture.